So that's our, our adjustment. If I were to take that carbon or that do something here. I'm gonna grab. They finally met up. Good. I'm gonna steal one back. Thank you. There's two important adjustments on this carburetor in regards to the uh, to the float level. There's the float height, we'll call it, and also the float drop. So it looks like a, a new one. You don't need. Some people use a little. Uh, uh, a piece of aluminum. They'll notch it out and they'll, they'll get where they want it to be. So I notched out a piece of aluminum and, and, and what they'll do is they'll set it right over the top of this. Okay, perfect. We're right where I want it to be. You can do it that way. You can buy a set of, uh, of calipers. What I'm doing is I'm setting it to zero right now and I'm going to uh, I'm going to 895 just, just because. I'm splitting the difference. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to hold this carburetor. I'm just not going to see it. And, and it opened up and fell over. And this is what we're talking about, the drop. This is a brand new carburetor, I think. Uh, let me set this thing back in. Okay, so what I'm gonna do is I don't wanna, I don't wanna push the, the float level, or the float down. I want to roll it over gently and see see where it stops. And now what I'm going to do is I'm going to set it. I'm going to set this. As you can see, I got about a about a sixteenth of an inch in between here uh, where I am. So I'm going to look the other side. It's about the same. It's it's fairly set up uh, or set up fairly equally. So I'm going to take and bend this tab down just a smidgen. Now I'm going to come back and visit it. And what I see is it, I went I went too far. But this, you can, you can see I'm just barely moving. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to bend that just a tad to get it as close to, and again, I'm, I'm raising it, and I'm gently setting it down, or I'll put it on edge, and I'll roll it over. And I got lucky, and I hit it on uh, pretty close to on the money. We're, we're right there. Okay, so I set it at 895. Now I know where that's my float height. Now what I need to do is is there's a little tab guys, on the on the float itself that keeps it from dropping too far. And RJ, I'm going to ask you for a pair of new ones. <laughs> Thank you. And so what I'm talking about is is the drop. We want to we want to moderate that as well, or, or mediate that, I should say, to to keep it from going too far. There's a little tab on the top, and I want to show this to you guys. What I'm going to do. There's a little cap right on the back here. I'm just going to bend that up against this post right here and keep keep that thing so so it goes. I know where I am this way, but but it's not bent all the way back. That's everybody bends it through something different, brings that down and it. You can't take it out of the box and put it on for your right out of the issue. See how this needs to be bent up against here, and then we can set it exactly where we want it to be. You know, you've seen that one before. But you see right there, I, what I've got is, is I've got this set the way I want it, but I have to bend it up against that. So because I want it to only open up about a little bit more. Right now, I'm just going to hold it back so it will stop up against that. Really, really simple. Okay, that makes sense. Yeah. Really, really simple. This is going to be bent right back to here. So it stops right now. It's, you can see it's going okay. to bounce but I can get it just a little bit further. And it's going to work as it should. I want it to, when I drop it this way, I only want it to drop it into the inch past where it is already. Thanks, Arjun. <coughs> so, guys, what I'm going to do is, is I'm just going to take this. I'm going to, I'm going to pinch it between just to get a feel for for where I am. Bear with me one second here. So right now I've got it, and it's, so I'm going to check it this way, and then I'm going to check it over here, and I can see it's dropping about a, about, a, 
ah, it went a little bit further than I wanted to. It's not an exact measurement on the back side. You just want it to drop about an eighth of an inch to three sixteenths. You don't want it to flap all the way open. That's just not where you, where you, where you want it to be. Okay. So what I did is I, and I'm going to reset it again so it, where I want it to be. I'm going to check this and say we're good. And then I'm just going to turn it over this way. I'm going to run it up against that and say, okay, it's not quite dropping as far as I want it to. So I'm going to bend that just, just a smidgen more against it. And now you can see it's, it's moving just enough. It, it's going to bounce. It's going to bounce a little bit. Uh, we just need it to allow fuel to come in. And uh, it, it, the, the drop will not affect performance. What it will do is, is drive, if, if you took the thing off, if you took the bowl off, we don't want to be losing parts in there. Let's set that so we know where it is and you're, and you're good to go. The drop has a, a little bit to do with performance, but it'll keep it from bouncing off the bottom and also the bottom of the bowl and, adjust, and messing with your float adjustment. So there's our float. We set the, uh, we set 880 or more, again, closer to 900 for the green and then even for the black slide. If you guys wanted to go to 900 and experiment, you'll probably see a gain, especially for those with a 15 degree mount. The bigger the, the, bigger the angle, probably the greater the, uh, uh, the float. So, but, but experiments. Maybe your engine wants to be at 890. Maybe it wants to be at 880. Maybe it wants to be at 900. Play with it a little bit. See where, see where its sweet spot is. Again, I'm going back to the outboard motor because it's a really simple example. When you find that sweet spot, you know what it does. It, it, it runs perfectly. Okay, so one of the things that, that I will tell you, running pump gas or whatever you guys are running, you got an 11,000 or maximum 12,000 surface here, maximum 39,000 here. What I tell you wouldn't be a bad idea is to pick up, sometimes we leave stuff in the trailer for a little while, it sits in there for a month, and then it won't start, and doggone it, I'm ticked off because I don't know what's going on. What I would tell you is, I've got my go-no-go -no -go gauges here, but pick up, you can buy them for a dollar twenty-two or something like that, a little 11 thousandths pit gauge. Every once in a while, you might want to just drop it in there to make sure it's unobstructed. If it's not pulling as well as it should off the bottom, anytime I set, I set the float, I just make sure that this thing, no dirt got in there or something like it. I'll run my 11 or 12 thousandths in it to make sure it's good. Don't try to force a 13 in there because if I follow up with a 13 and it falls in, we're having a conversation behind the, behind the shed. So I can see that that one won't go and I can see that this one will go, it drops in. So again, if you're setting the float, take a second, 11 thousandths of an inch is not much. A little piece of dirt will affect your bottom line performance. And, and it's hugely important that you work with that. So you're going to reassemble it, you're going to put it back together, and, and everybody's on the same page. Any questions about that? Again, going back to the 890, 880, 860, 840, some people will say, I, if, if I spend all my time on the bottom end of a racetrack, which is unusual, uh, still I want it to be in the sweet spot of fuel, and I'm looking, I, if I see color in the spark plug, I'm throwing too much fuel at it. All right. What I'm going to do next is the intake manifold. And this is, this is huge, guys, uh, because we're talking about that series of quarter percent. So far, we figure we've picked up maybe about three quarters of a, of a percent by making the adjustments that we have. Let me put Humpty Dumpty back together again here real quick, and we'll be good. So. The next thing I want to do is, is how the intake manifold picks up, or, or how I introduce air to the carburetor and into the venturi. If, if we can't port these things, we can't polish them, this is not a builder's cap class, this is a box stock, so we save that for intermediate or, or open. But again, we're going back to those series of, of quarter percents. What I'm going to do is I'm going to take that intake manifold I want to match up the bottom half. The intake manifold is slightly bigger. It's slightly bigger. I want to match up uh, the bottom half of the carburetor to the bottom half of the intake manifold. So what that means is when I center this thing on here, I don't want it to be perfectly centered because it's going to 
it's going it, to, it's, the intake manifold is slightly larger. So what I'm going to do is I want the bottom half to be perfect and then perfect around the top in terms of centering it. It gives you on the intake manifold the ability to move it up and down and slide it. Set it perfectly, it makes a difference in performance on how air is, air is picked up. It, with the green slide, you run the risk of pooling fuel. Two, because the orifices are the same, but we, but we green slide, we slow the volume of air. Our problem with that is uh, we might get more air in there, than, I'm sorry, more fuel in there than we want. So if we line this up, we know it's, it's picking it up, it's not, uh, it's directing air correctly. When I rebuild an engine at a, at, a, at a higher level, first thing I'm doing is I'm pulling off the cylinder head. My favorite thing to do is when I take that off, if I can look at that piston, my, it, 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 it's a thing of beauty when you make all these things line up. I'll see, a, I'll see a carbon buildup about the size of a half dollar in the center of the piston. And the outsides of the piston look like they've never been run. That's because we've got the cam where it needs to be, we've got the carburation fuel where it needs to be, we have the airflow where it needs to be. You can match those things and make it work. It's, it's crazy, but with as much time as you put into it, that if you're going to hit the top of a piston with a sledgehammer, we're not going to hit it at the top or the bottom or the left or the right side or the left side. We want to hit it square in the center. So we know that that we can make a difference by lining up that intake manifold perfectly. It will introduce air to the carburetor, but more importantly, it will channel air through the through the port and through the bowl of the uh, of the intake valve and spread it across the piston where we want it to be. So it's a it's, it's a huge component. So. Again, for this intake manifold, bottom half. What all you can't you can't see it from the backside. You can't look at it this way and close. What I'll always do is I'm taking the intake manifold off here. I'll take the whole thing off, and you might have to make an X head wrench because unfortunately they're all a little bit long. You might have to cut a little bit off of it, but I'm always taking it off here. I don't want to mess this adjustment up. So I'll take it off here. I'll get that adjustment right where I want. I'll set the, uh, I'll set my intake manifold correctly. I'll set my float. I'll do those things, and I'll put it back together here. But any time in the future that I take it back apart again, I'm always doing it here because that mating surface is that important. So don't take it off here to set your, uh, because to set your uh, float height, it's going to be impossible for you to see exactly where you want it to be. This one is drilled perfectly, so you're, you're not going to find an advantage to that. This one gives it, the reason that it's slotted is because when you run different angles of uh, motor mount, it gives you the ability to compensate for that. But let's, let's set it, forget this one, the same way that we're doing it with this brass adjustment here. Okay, so there's an O-ring in the front. There's nothing. We... We uh, occasionally have issues. Some people like to, they want to try to, I think I can get more air in there. So what I'll do is I'll bring my ether can along and we'll spray it, we'll idle it in the in tech and, and if it kills the engine, I'm sorry, but your day is over with it. It's a DQ because people want to try to find a way to, to do it again. If somebody's trying to talk you into it or somebody says, if you do this or this or this, I, you can pick up a little bit. I'm here today to help you find what those are legally because we don't want to have heartache on, uh, on a Saturday night uh, at the end of a race. So uh, keep it as it is and keep it stock and it will perform fabulously. Uh, okay, so we're there. Uh, O-ring, we've talked about that. We tighten the carb to the manifold. Guys, this is a rule. I'll, always, I'll, I'll put this one back in first. It has the uh, closest to the order shroud over here. I'll, put with, I'll, I'll start it by hand. Only because if I drop it down inside there, now I'm going to take the side cover off and I start cussing a little bit. It takes all the fun out of it. So put that, start that one first, and then start this one. It's an easier way. You can rotate that carburetor and get everything out of the way. It makes it nice and easy and simple. 